Hare Krishna. We continue today our discussion on the Nam Ramayana, and we'll be discussing two, four beautiful names today. These are names which especially describe the Lord's pastimes, as he was in the forest with Vishwamitra. So Gautam Muni Sampujita Rama, Sur Muni Vargana Samstuta Rama, Navik Dhavit Mrudupada Rama. Mithila Purjan Mohakarama. So Gautama Muni Sampujit Rama. So here the principle being described is that Lord Ram he had he delivered Ahalya. So the story of Ahalya is often told from different perspectives in in the tradition. And the basic principle is that Ahalya was extremely beautiful. She was a hermitess, the wife of Gautam Muni, and Ra and Indra was attracted to her. And knowing that she was very chaste, he decided to approach her, taking on the garb of Gautam Muni. Now, when she when he approached her at that time. Ahalya herself, she was very, uh, she was also, uh, she also had mystic powers, and she understood this was actually not my husband. This is Indra, and in a moment of weakness, she got carried away, and she thought, "Oh, I am so attractive that even the king of gods, even the Gog, he is coming, and he is going to so much extremes to be with me." And thus, despite knowing what was happening, she gave in to the temptation. And when uh, after they united, they were going. Uh, Indra was going at that time. Gautam Muni came back, and he saw another person looking just like him, and he understood what had happened. And he, uh, enraged, he cursed uh, Indra to become deformed. His entire body became deformed, and Ahalya he told her that you will turn into a stone because you have acted without intelligence, without discrimination. So let your consciousness become devolved to the level of a stone. So at that time, at one level, Gautam Muni succumbed to anger, but. Lord Ram came and delivered. He, he, he so Ahalya sought forgiveness from him, and from Gautam Muni. And Gautam Muni said that yes, you have committed a wrong, and you can get forgiveness when Ram comes and touches your feet. So Ram touched the feet of Ahalya, and thereby she was delivered. And once she was delivered, what happened was that Gautam Muni sampujita. So Gautam Muni, he actually Lord Ram had a very special relationship with the sages, because he was playing the role of a human being. Lord Ram offered great respect and reverence to the sages. Simultaneously, because the sages knew that he was the divine, he was Vishnu, they offered respects to him. So here, Gautam Muni realized that the uh, power, that the curse which he had given under the influence of anger, it had been countered by Ram. And Ram and uh, as Gautam Muni and Ahalya, both of them were again reunited, and they were elevated to a higher destination by Ram's grace. So Ram was worshipped by Gautam Muni, and his hermitage, which had become a wilderness, was restored, and he was reinstated. He was elevated to a higher destination. So Gautam Muni himself was a powerful sage, but that powerful sage worshipped Ram. Because Ram had the prowess to counter the to undo the damage that he had done because of his uh, angry curse, and thus Ram was Ram was worshipped Gautam Muni, Sampujita Rama, and then Sura Muni Varagana Samstutta Rama. Sura Muni Varagana. Sura is the gods. Muni is the sages. Varagana. Sura Muni Varagana, 
so all of them together the best among them samstuta rama so as ram performed all these miracles uh, the devtas and the sages praised ram if we consider in the world there are broadly two sources of dharma two foundations for dharma there is the brahmanas and the kshatriyas so the suras are represent the best among the kshatriyas they are meant to represent the best among the kshatriyas and the uh, munis represent the best among the brahmanas there can be brahmanas who perform simply priestly activities and there are brahmanas who can perform uh, who are more renowned more detached more devoted to the pursuit of transcendence and often they are referred to as munis so sura muni vargana samstutta rama so both of them both the foundational limbs of society brahmana and kshatriyas both were elevated both were protected and the path for elevation for progression was cleared by ram how by removal of the demons earlier ram had prevent prevented the disruption of the of the sacrifice of vishwamitra now when this such a disruption is avoided by that the cosmic harmony is maintained the sages are pleased and the devtas are pleased the bhagavad gita says devan bhavayata nena te deva bhavayantu vah parasparam bhavayanta shreya param avapsyatha so devan bhavayata nena that by the mercy of the devtas we get we get results and we get our necessities and they are pleased they give it to us and when we be grateful we offer sacrifices to them then both are pleased so the among the, hum, the human society the sacrifices are performed by the hum, by the sages so sura muni refers to this sister cycle of cosmic cooperation and uh, overall harmony this was maintained by ram and because it was maintained by ram both the sages and the gods were pleased with him and both of them offered their stuti their praise sam stuta ram stuta stuta stuti or praise so praying to and offering respects and praise to the divine is a powerful way in which each one of us can grow spiritually and that is what the sages were doing over here sura muni var gana samstuta rama this is especially seen in the shrimad bhagavatam where after krishna performs past times the devatas or the sages or other characters offer prayers now in the ram valmiki ramayana people praying to ram is not described so often or so frequently but still it is also there and especially in the adhyatma ramayana this is described even further so then navik dhavit mrudpad ram so navik dhavit mrudpad that means that as ram was going to cross a, a river he asked for a boat and he was looking for a boat and there was a boatman navik navik means a boatman and when ram was about to step into the step into the boat and he said oh my dear lord no 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 now ram had just done something miraculous what was that by his feet touching to a stone the stone had transformed into a beautiful beautiful woman so the boatman said my dear lord your feet has extraordinary prowess so <clears throat> there are different renditions of the story depending on the angle that is being taken so some people say that the the, the navik said that oh lord no i already have a family i already have a wife that if you touch this boat if your feet touch the boat and this boat transforms into another woman you know i will lose the boat which is the source of my livelihood and i will have another woman to maintain i can't do this so the lord said the lord smiled and he said that nothing like that will happen and he says no 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 i cannot be sure let me wash your feet so 
धावित धावित मृदुपद राम जेंटली ही वॉश द फीट ऑफ लॉर्ड राम सो नाउ दिस इज द की पॉइंट ओवर हियर इज नॉट वॉट ही सेड बट द की पॉइंट वॉज वॉट ही डिड ही गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वॉश द लोटस फीट ऑफ राम एंड द आइडिया इज दैट normally the lord's feet they are they are transcendental they are divine to get to the opportunity to touch them is itself a great blessing to wash them and to take the dust from the feet to take the water from that feet and to put it on one's own body to put it on one's own forehead to drink the charanamrit this is immensely purifying and this is a sacrament that is supremely spiritualizing and to be able to do that was the great fortune of the sportsman so sometimes to do something transcendental some practical reasoning might be used so the practical reasoning is just a pretext and the lord out of his sweetness accepts the pretext and uh, looks at the heart of the devotee and lets the devotee do what is in their heart and that's how uh, the service was done that's how the issue the ram was able to do what was supposed to be done so importantly so rather the boatman was able to do what was supposed to be done what he longed to do with his heart that is bathe the lotus feet of ram so for each one of us whatever be the situation we are in if we can somehow or the other uh, get in touch with the sacraments of devotion in terms of washing the lotus feet of the lord or in terms of taking the charanam or in terms of whatever is possible for us we need to treasure that and do that because there is immense potency in them not always will that immense potency be seen in terms of a stone transforming into a uh, into a woman by in those any miraculous things like that but the real miracle is in the heart our heart will become purified it will become elevated ultimately our heart will become free from its stone like state of not feeling any emotions in relationship with the lord to feeling divine emotions and that's what we all long for on the path of bhakti to be enriched to be energized to be enlivened with the powerful flow of devotional emotions for the lord and then मिथिला पुरजन मोहक राम सो मिथिला पुरजन मोहक एज लॉर्ड राम वेंट थ्रू द फॉरेस्ट दे केम टू द सिटी ऑफ ऑफ मिथिला नाउ दिस वॉज विश्वामित्र प्लान एंटायरली विश्वामित्र वॉन्टेड टू ग्लोरिफाई राम सो नॉर्मली एज डिवोटीज now vishwamitra plays two distinct roles in the life of ram one is he brings out the kshatriya within him for the whole world to see for the first time that how powerful is he that he could defeat even the toughest of demons but secondly what he does is he unites the lord with his eternal consort so after the demons were killed and the sacrifice was completed kaushika maka samrakshak ram as we discussed last time and after that ram suggests uh, vishwamitra said let us go to mithila to the sacrifice to the swayamvar of sita so then they decided to go and as soon as ram entered over there he was so so magnetizing so elegant so cultured so composed so charismatic he just captivated the hearts of everyone so mithilapur jan mohak ram mithilapur refers to the in the city of mithila jana is the people mohak he completely captivated the hearts so ram when he as will be described how he got uh, the hand of sita the point was that ram did not just win the hand of sita he won the hearts of all the citizens of the kingdom of sita and that is the beauty of the lord that especially if we have a devotional disposition toward him then his beauty 
not only becomes perceivable to us but it becomes irresistible for us so the citizens of uh, mithila had a devotional disposition naturally towards sita he sees our princess and out of their devotion for her they wanted the very best for her and they wanted the very best they longed and prayed just like her own father did that she may she have the best husband and when they saw ram he because of their devotional disposition ram's virtues which were which were evident to everyone became so evident so irresistibly evident to them that nobody could resist the entire city was filled with love for ram and that's how he captivated the hearts of the citizens of mithila and soon he would captivate the heart of the princess of mithila how that happens we'll discuss in our next session thank you re krishna